Welcome to the, our liturgy. Please stand now as we begin. If you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O oh God of Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the 28th Sunday in the ordinary time, and Jesus is our only treasure. We pray that God, through his word, may continue to cut our hearts to see this only treasure, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the many times we have failed to recognize that Jesus is our only treasure, let us call to mind our sins and so ask God for his mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamp of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand, and before her, silver is to be accounted mire. 
Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks to be to God. Our response is, fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us, Fill us with, with your, your love, love, O Lord, Lord and, and we, we will sing, sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Fill us Fill with us your, your love, love, O Lord, Lord and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Make us glad for the days when you afflicted us, for the years when we saw evil. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, All of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, And he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard! It is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then 
who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings, it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, we have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or lands, for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses, and brothers, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with the persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, our homilist is our beloved pastor, Father Justin. So I welcome Father Justin to share with us the word of God. So this weekend is the annual kickoff weekend for the annual Catholic Appeal, and as we do every year, we receive a message from our bishop, which we're going to listen to right now. Know that I'm grateful for your generosity, and I'm 
So because we align our annual parish stewardship drive with the uh, diocesan drive every year, uh, we, uh, you have not received your packets in the mail, as Bishop uh, mentioned. You'll receive those next weekend. So next weekend in the narthex, um, for those of you who have been here for many years, we will have those in the narthex with your name on them. So we invite you next weekend to pick up your stewardship packet, which will include information about the parish stewardship appeal as well as the diocesan appeal. The, the focus here at the parishes here is on our, our 60th year and all the changes that our community has gone through for the sake of growth and development and to make an offering that primes us for the future to continue to be nimble and docile to the movement of the spirit. So that's our parish appeal. But I wanna point out specifically uh, two things that the diocesan appeal um, helps to strengthen here at St. Thomas More. So first, before I do that, I just want to say, I say this every year when I'm up in front of you, um, our parish is wildly supportive of the ACA every year. Um, up until last year, we were the, the only parish with a three-figure goal in the entire diocese. And last year, we surpassed that by like $70,000. We are always in the first or second in terms of parishes and the number of participants. And that was here before I got here, has nothing to do with me, has everything to do with you. This community has bought in to support of the diocese. You understand it. I, I can do nothing but applaud you for your understanding of the support of the local church. So thank you on behalf of my predecessors and my successors who will come after me. Um, this community is a great gift to the diocese. There are two things, and the bishop mentioned these, that impact us in a particular way this year. The first is Missouri Scholars. We've given presentations on Missouri Scholars here at the parish. We have material out in the Narthex. Missouri Scholars is a scholarship program that helps fund families to access Catholic education in the diocese through the Bright Futures Fund. This has only been in operation for about two or three years. We have nearly 60 students, it's in the high 50s, this year at St. Thomas More that receive those scholarship dollars. The amount of money that comes in for just accepting those students is over $300,000. That's $300,000 that came in this year to help fund our school that would not have been there otherwise. That's like 12% of our student population is funded through the scholarship program. And essentially it amounts to a Missouri resident who pays tax dollars to the state, asking the state to divert some of those tax dollars into the scholarship fund. And on your stewardship appeal this year, there will be a box where we ask you, if you are already participating in this, we just want to know. Many of you are. We would just like to know if this is something you're participating in, and for those who are not, we'll make an invitation to consider participating because it has immense impact immediately here at our parish and our school. That is something that the diocese initiated. And as the bishop mentioned, of all of the programs in the state who are participating in the scholarship program, the Bright Futures Fund here in the diocese brings in more money and it applies to more students than any place else in the state. The second, is with regards to confirmation. This year, the diocese lowered the confirmation age to sixth grade. So over the next few years, we will be adjusting our confirmation preparation to meet at the sixth grade level. And one of the things that the diocese has implemented in preparation for this change is more investment in our families to be the first and the best teachers for their children in the ways of faith. So this fall, our third grade families, and this is all in preparation for the celebration of the sacrament years down the road, our third grade families will receive a do-it-yourself home retreat kit. This is provided by the diocese to help their families do a retreat at home that helps center their spiritual lives. Our fourth graders this year 
are participating in a Ten Commandments series at home. Um, we heard Jesus reference the commandments in today's gospel. That's how important they are, foundational they are to our, our well-being and our, our discipleship. And we recognize that for many families, we've simply drifted away from the understanding of the power of the commandments. So our fourth grade students, again in preparation for confirmation, are having time at home with their parents reviewing the commandments. And then our sixth grade families. This year, they are participating in online modules called Empowering Parent. And the idea is to help parents, as their kids age, be able to communicate well with them. The church recognizes that for parents today, their kids are facing things that they could not have dreamed of that they would have to deal with 20 years ago. It's too complicated, it's overwhelming, and for many parents, they want to recoil from trying to address so many things in their child's life. And so the church wants to impart something to them to help them talk with their kids about visioning and goal setting and leaning into God for values. So this is another way of saying that the diocese has initiated all of these uh, valuable ministries to help sort of foster and form our families in a stronger way, again, through the sacramental program. So next weekend, look for your, uh, your stewardship forms out in the, in the narthex, take them home, review all the information. Um, but again, the invitation is all of the developments that are brand new and will be new. That's what we're asking you to support. And if you and I can continue to do that, we should have great confidence that our life here at the parish and throughout the diocese will continue to bear great fruit. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God. And now let us turn our hearts and our minds to the God that invites us to open up our hearts to him and to him we present our petitions. For the church in this year of prayer that our prayer today may prepare us to give all we have and all we are to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear prayer. For all those entrusted with leadership in the church, that God may satisfy their desire for wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear prayer. For those affected by natural disasters, that God may encourage them through the kindness of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear prayer. For parents and all those entrusted with bringing up children in the faith, 
that they may grow in faith themselves as they teach by word and example. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are grieving, that the Lord may walk with them and fill them with love, that they may sing for joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everlasting joy and peace of all the faithful departed, including Terry Brown and John Aldergott, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we bring to Mass, including Mary Kate Hughes, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer and grant us the Spirit to choose your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as our main treasure in life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice into your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought a renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer him thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas More, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Pope Francis, and James, our bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the lamp of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed.
The rich suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us share as of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to any visitors and to parishioners who are back with after an extended absence. In two weeks, Fresh Fire, our Friday evening adoration, praise and worship, testimony and intercessory prayer is held in the church. Next weekend, there is a second collection for Mission Sunday. Next weekend, St. Thomas More families who attend St. Michael the Archangel High School will have a bake sale in the Natex, raising funds for their January trip to the March for Life in Washington, D.C. This Thursday, the parish office will be closed for the Decession Pastoral Staff Day. This Wednesday, a peer grief support group meets in Moore Hall, facilitated by Pastoral Associate Peggy Lucas. The Knights are also in the Natex this weekend for their annual Tooth Roll Drive, accepting donations in support of spe Special Olympics. Yard signs in opposition to Amendment 3 are available in the Natex this weekend, provided by the Missouri Catholic Conference. Eucharistic adoration is held in the church on Sundays following the 11 a.m. mass until 9 p.m. Details on any of these events can be found in our bulletin website weekly email blast, or by scanning the QR code in your pews. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.